President Biden did something he and his media allies have promised over and over and over again that he would not do. This guy is an abject liar. He might, and he has the nerve to, while he's he's telling yet another lie, which is that he doesn't lie, to keep lying. Like there's, at every turn, he just lies. The, the, everyone knew he was going to pardon Hunter. We all knew that. At least that's my perspective. But you see the left absolutely shocked today. <laughs> They're shocked. Like they actually believe this guy when he was like, I know I'm not going to pardon him. And we're all like, you know, he's totally going to pardon him. He's a liar. That's all he does is lie. And he, he was in on his son's crimes. So, yes, of course, he'll, he'll be pardoning him. But the left is like, oh, that half of them are like, oh, and then the other half are like, Oh, he's a good father. He loves his. <laughs> it's like a good microcosm of the divide in this country on this man, this whole problem with the Biden crime family, as it's called. Um, and really kind of, I hope, yet another wake up call to our friends on the left that they are consuming their news from the wrong places. <laughs> You've been misled again. All right, let's go through the timeline. The dates actually are important. It starts back in January of 14, just before um, Hunter Biden joined the board of Burisma, this Ukrainian energy company, and Hunter had no expertise in energy whatsoever. His dad was the sitting vice president of the United States, and he's been pardoned through that date, from that date, through yesterday, the day of the pardon. Now, why would you have to go back to all that stuff. I mean, we all know why. Because Joe Biden is pardoning himself and not just his son. He wants to make sure that all of those alleged crimes for which his DOJ already gave Hunter a pass remain untouched. Um, The president, after lighting this match, promptly jetted out of town to Africa. I mean, good on him, right? A couple of middle fingers for everyone right before he leaves office. Um, Of course, many, as I said, knew that this promise that he's been making over and over was empty. Um, We've all been saying it, and I don't know. Does it change anybody's view of what's going to happen? And most importantly, I guess the question is, does it change what President Trump is likely to do once he is sworn in again with respect to the J6 defendants, because that's what the left is really worried about. Joining me now, uh, it's National Review Day here at the MK Show. Editor-in-Chief Rich Lowry and senior writer Charles C.W. Cook, host of the Charles C.W. Cook podcast. Rich and Charlie, welcome back. Am I wrong? We all knew this was coming. Everyone who consumes media that is not far left 100% knew this was coming. We didn't like it. We didn't support it. But nobody believed his lies, Rich, that he wasn't going to do it. Yeah, so some lies that politicians tell are irritating because you believe them, right? And then you're really disappointed when they turned out they were lying to you. This is irritating because it was so blatantly obvious, right? And the honorable thing to do would have been said, say, no comment when asked about this, or I'm not going to address hypotheticals or, or whatever. Instead, they blatantly lied. It was part of the scheme. As soon as he considered it, what back in June, he started lying about it. So this, but it's typical Biden, you know, this great protector of our norms and the small D democratic politics has been a dishonest hack his entire life. So this is a a proper and fitting coda to his sordid career. Yeah, there here is just a little of, for those of you who forgot it, of Joe Biden, here's one example of him making that promise. What's the date of this first one, Debbie? Sot one, we'll find it. Listen here. Will you accept the jury's outcome, their verdict, no matter what it is? Yes. And have you ruled out a pardon for your son? Yes. I'm extremely proud of my son, Hunter. He has overcome an addiction. He is, he's one of the brightest, most decent men I know. And uh, I am satisfied that I'm not going to do anything. I, sa- I said I'd abide by the jury decision. And I will do that, and I will not pardon him. Those are all from June. I mean, he went back, Charles, we know that. But those are just, that's just June. It's not like a lifetime ago. And he issues this infuriating statement. I mean, infuriating, acting like a bunch of stuff has happened, you know, between then and now that really changes his whole perspective on everything. It's really not true. 
He says the following. Uh, this is crazy. People are almost ever brought to trial on felony charges solely for how they filled out a gun form. As if this is really all just about the gun, right? That is the trial that he had, but there's a reason he was only tried at that trial on the gun form thing. He goes on to say that those who were late paying their taxes because of serious addictions, but then paid them back subsequently with interest and penalties are typically given non-criminal resolutions. It is clear the hunter was treated differently. This is so galling, Charlie, so galling. It's hard to know where to start with this. It's so galling. And the backdrop to this, of course, is that prior to becoming vice president, then retiring and then becoming president, Joe Biden's main contribution to the canon of American law was to increase the penalties for gun crimes and drug crimes, and often to increase the penalties where those two things intersected. He spent years, decades, railing against people who had addiction and saying that it didn't matter. There's a speech he gave in the Senate where he says it doesn't matter. That's not what's important, whether people are addicted or not. So, so <clears throat> the history here is, is interesting in and of itself. Um, but the, the chutzpah of this statement, I mean, NBC News published a piece, a reported piece this afternoon in which it... Uh, suggests that Joe Biden had decided in June that he was going to say that he would not pardon his son, even though the plan was to pardon his son. But it wasn't just that he lied about it and then changed his mind. The plan was to lie about it and then change his mind. You can look it up. Go read the NBC News story. That was part of the whole approach. And then he has the temerity in the statement that you just quoted from to finish it by saying, <laughs> throughout my entire career, I've had one principle to which I have hewed, and that's to tell the American people the truth. <laughs> so he says that in the statement in which he is <laughs> announcing a pardon that he had said for six months, having planned to do so, that he was not going to pardon his son. I mean, you just... You just could not write it. It's 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 extraordinary. The whole thing is such a great example of corruption. And what makes it more annoying than most of Biden's annoying habits is that this has been used over and over and over again to demonstrate Biden's supposed moral superiority, his integrity, his honesty, his willingness to stick to the rules, what separates him from others, why one has to vote for him or his vice president, because he's the sort of man, you see, who understands the rule of law, respects the rule of law, even when his own son is involved. And of course, it just turns out that it was an election year ploy and the whole thing was a massive lie. And that's before we get, as I'm sure we will, to what you were adumbrating earlier, which is this bizarre super pardon uh, that covers activity for 10 years, much of which hasn't yet been prosecuted. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the thing about this, as you say, multi-layered here, but one of the things about this that really gets me is he's trying to make a victor out of Hunter. It's clear Hunter, Hunter was treated mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make a victim out of him. And as opposed to like, you, you know, if you guys lied and said that, your payments on strippers and hookers were tax write-offs, like you wouldn't be prosecuted. You know, it was just poor Hunter who had to deal with that. And it was really just his addiction. Like if usually addicts just get a pass, it's only poor Hunter who didn't. And the audience has heard me talk about this in bits and pieces over the years. And I'll, I'll just offer this. My own sister got swept up into the opioid crisis and truly, it was truly not through fault of her own. She was, um, she she needed a pain medication after this incident she suffered. And they gave her this drug and specifically told her, like we saw in Dope Sick with respect to um, OxyContin, though her drug was not OxyContin, that it wasn't addictive. So she started taking this drug and sure enough, she got addicted. And then she got really addicted. And her life went to hell. I mean, just, we'd never had, you know, an alcoholic or drug addict, you know, we, that wasn't a thing that was really in our family. And my poor sister's life got completely blown up 
by this thing, by this addiction, to the point where she ultimately, once the family sort of tried to let her have a hard love, a tough love period where we weren't helping her out of the jams that she was creating, um, found herself in the in the throes of the criminal law. I mean, it was petty any stuff, but she she did wind up on the wrong side. And you know what she did? She had to handle it. She had to get a public defender. She had to handle the, the penalty. She didn't go to jail or anything like that, but she, she it remained a mark on her record forever. And you know what that does to a person? You can't get a job. You cannot get a damn job because it's on there. And no one gives a damn that you were addicted. No one cares about that backstory I just gave to you. So fuck you, Joe Biden, and your sob story about your rich, spoiled presidential kid, Hunter Biden, and how he's been singled out. Because I know I speak for millions of people who have an addict in their family who did something they're not proud of, who could never get out from under it. We have no sympathy for you, Hunter Biden, and even less for you, Joe Biden, because you enabled all of it. You were using him to line your own pocket. That is what the emails suggest, 10% for the big guy and Tony Bobolinsky and others. And Rich, this is why, just one of the many pieces, why this whole thing is so irritating. Yeah, so I think everyone has sympathy for his addiction, right? I, I, I go on this this New York radio show, Sid Rosenberg. He, he is one of the uh, warm-up acts at, at MSG and he had terrible addiction problems, blew up his whole radio career. He says, you know, you hate yourself every single time you do it, right? And I, I'm sure Hunter was there with that self-loathing as well. No one just criticized him for that, except for maybe some dumb things Matt Gates said, said along the line. The problem was the crimes, right? And the, the idea that he was a, a victim of Joe Biden's own Justice Department, when clearly the, the original plan was to have the holdover a DA up there, just, just slow walk this and, and do nothing about it, right? That, that was the first idea. And then was, when there was public pressure about it and accountability about it, then they came up with this, this plea deal, right, that, ref, that the president refers to as a carefully negotiated plea deal, which might be the truest phrase in the entire statement. Yes, it was carefully negotiated to give Hunter every possible uh, break and to make this thing basically go away. And then he complains in the statement that there was outside pressure about the plea deal. Yeah, people pointed out it was a travesty and that it couldn't survive first contact with an independent judge. That's when it blew up. So, so the so the idea that that it was Joe Biden's haters who you know responsible for the plea plea deal going away or the plea deal was was uh, straight up at, at the beginning was was crazy. He was afforded every possible consideration by Biden's Justice Department until it became unsustainable, and then he was treated more or less like anyone else in one of these cases. And look, but only when they were forced. Fathers, yeah, when they were forced. And most fathers, yeah, they would they would do this, right? They would pardon him. They wouldn't see him go to jail if they had the, par- the power to do that, which everyone knew, right? Which is why one of the reasons we knew it was a lie. And then finally, it doesn't mention at all, even though the, the, the dates, as you point out, encompass this conduct, the, the self-dealing and the, the Biden lobbying and influence peddling business, which is what everyone was after, right? The gun charge is penny ante compared to that stuff. And because... The prosecutor up there let the statute of limitations kind of roll on and uh, uh, most of this stuff get past it. That'll never be prosecuted. And that was the, the real abuse of public trust. There is an epidemic affecting two out of every three Americans, poor gut health. Processed foods, stress at work, fluoride in the water, and even toxins in the air you breathe can overwhelm your digestive system. You might expect to feel the bloating and the heartburn, but the sleepless nights afternoon crashes, even mood swings, these are all signs your gut may need some attention. While most probiotics get torn apart in your stomach acid, the spore-based strains in Just Thrive Probiotic are clinically proven to arrive in your gut 100% alive, creating a fortress of good bacteria that can support digestion, immune system, and mental clarity. Just Thrive Probiotic is a non-GMO and gluten Free product, and you can choose between berry flavored gummies or easy to swallow capsules. You can even open the capsule and mix the contents into your morning coffee or sprinkle it over your food. For over a decade, Just Thrive has been fighting to make Americans healthy again with science backed solutions you can trust. To join the gut health revolution, visit justthrivehealth.com and save 20% site wide with promo code MEGAN. That's justthrivehealth.com, promo code MEGAN. 